Now, looking at the, uh, the space, we are going to be following these alterations and see whether it goes to lead to ankle arthritis so that there will be clinical relevance to deciding whether we should fix certain things based on these dimensions. I want to show you some cases uh, because I think this is, uh, brings it home the best. This is a 65-year-old woman, lateral this fracture. She had a negative stress x-ray. Uh, she was treated conservatively. 12 weeks later, she's still symptomatic. A weight-bearing CAT scan was ordered. And you can see here's the normal side weight-bearing, and here's the affected side weight-bearing, okay? Now here's that angle that I talked about before. So the normal side weight-bearing is a 62-degree angle. The affected side weight-bearing is 56 degrees. So that's a more acute angle, which means that that fibula is squ being squirted out of the incisura. So you've got a winding of your syndesmosis space, and this angle, again, is very reproducible. And here's the affected, a normal side versus affected side, non-weight bearing, and you can see that the angle is almost the same. Even though it does look abnormal, the angle's the same, and so this one is um, with weight bearing, a very good demonstration of the increased difference from side to side in the weight bearing CAT scan. This is a 25-year-old male, SER uh, injury, supination external rotation injury. He had positive stress X-ray. He had a proximal ORIF, so this is a major new type fracture. We did a uh, stress view, which was negative following the fixation, and the patient was still symptomatic with pain and inability to weight bear, and the MRI was inconclusive, which we'd expect, because an MRI is gonna show you the soft tissues, it doesn't show you the integrity of the soft tissue, it doesn't show you their ability to hold the fibula in place. So um, with this weight-bearing CAT scan, you can see affected side versus a normal side, and you see four millimeter space between the fibula and tibia versus 2.6 millimeters. And so with weight-bearing, you see uh, that this uh, space is greater on the affected side versus non-affected side. On the, on the non-weight bearing, we have 3.5 millimeters non-weight bearing affected versus non-affected, uh, non-weight bearing, 2.6 millimeters. So less dramatic, certainly more dramatic with the weight bearing. Again, showing the features of the weight bearing CAT scan and coming up with a treatment plan for the patient. So 27-year-old male with a Weber B fracture, they're not supposed to have syndesmotic injuries, but they do. 25% of them will actually have a syndesmotic injury. It was treated non-operatively, and here you can see on the affected weight-bearing side that the fibula is sitting anteriorly. It's translated anteriorly relative to the incisora, and here you see uh, the affected side non-weight-bearing sitting more posteriorly. Again, you could do this and compare it to the other side if there's a question, but this is a very nice demonstration of something that would not be seen on a stress view or not necessarily be seen on a regular x-ray. Case four, there's this 57-year-old woman, trimalleolar fracture, she had ORIF, positive stress x-ray with syndesmotic fixation. We did an evaluation of the range of motion and syndesmotic measurements before and after syndesmotic screw removal, and here you see before the hard removal, dorsiflexion, before the hard removal, neutral, and you see that that distance doesn't change a lot. It's uh, 4.7 to 3.5. After hard removal, we go from a 6.2, which is a very dramatic difference, and then um, it's kind of sprung out and stayed out. So percentage-wise, it was really a pretty unstable syndesmosis to begin with. Hard removal really brought that out, and uh, in neutral position versus dorsiflexion, you see a change in the position. After hard removal neutral was 5.1, in dorsiflexion, it became uh, even greater. Case five, a 62-year-old male, right ankle pain following a supination external rotation injury, no fracture detected, uh, negative stress x-ray, non-operative treatment, non-weight bearing, looks pretty good. And this is a CAT scan, so you should, you know, this should really be a lot of detail. You do weight bearing and you see this very subtle instability. Now, for a young person, that may be an athletic career or a no athletic career. I mean, this could be a game changer. 62 year old, I mean, that's not so far away from my age, maybe, but I think that this may not have as, as dire consequences, but if certainly if this person, 62 year old, wanted to perform on Fenway stage, they might have trouble. And that could be pretty significant for somebody. 
Anyway, it's, uh, it's, in this case six, a 58 year old woman, right ankle fracture, negative stress x-ray, uh, conservative treatment was instituted. Here you see non-weight bearing, it looks pretty good. With weight bearing, look what happened to the fibula, it went posteriorly. I mean, you can't usually see that on an x-ray, that's very hard to see. I mean, you could see it on an AP, maybe a mortise view, but to see this, you have to have a CAT scan. Um, case seven, this is a, a Weber B fracture, 27 year old, non-operative treatment, non-weight bearing versus weight bearing, increased anterior and lateral translation of the distal fibula. You could also use this technology to look at OCD and arthritis to determine alignment and then to determine your plan of action. Now this is an extreme case, but you can imagine one that's more subtle where you're trying to figure out, should I just do a fibular osteotomy Debride the syndesmosis, debride the deltoid, reconnect the deltoid after a fibular osteotomy, which lengthened and rotated the fibula, or is this too far gone? Should this go right to an ankle replacement? Um, Non-weight bearing versus weight bearing, you see the true impact of these lesions. You see the talus is abutting against the fibula, the medial clear space is greater, the syndesmosis is greater, and you have the talus sitting in this invagination in the tibia, and that is a more severe case than what you'd see with a conventional imaging or a conventional CAT scan. And again, determining your treatment alternatives, you can still do your reconstruction, and you can now follow it and see if your prognosis is good before you do your case, if it has more than 25% involvement, maybe the prognosis is questionable. Maybe if it looked like this with the weight bearing, you'd have a better prognosis. These studies need to be done and will be now done with the weight bearing CAT scan. Uh, we could also do similar things with subtalar arthritis, weight bearing versus non-weight bearing, looking at the alignment and looking at the impingement between the fibula and the calcaneus. In this arthritic case, this is a patient that, uh, of mine who had an infected ORIF of the calcaneus. I didn't do it. Obviously, was not well done to begin with. Totally malreduced, infected, or subtalar arthritis. <coughs> Doing the weight bearing could make a substantial difference whether you're going to do a distraction bone block arthrodesis. And if you're gonna do that, you wanna stage it because of the patient's infection, get the infection cleared first, and then go ahead and do a secondary reconstruction. Uh, Charcot is one of the areas that is near and dear to me, and uh, this CAT scan can be very useful to see the alignment here. You see the fibula and tibia sitting about uh, two inches away from the talus. The metamoleus is completely shattered. The entire fossa of the distal tibia is sitting empty, uh, and uh, the talus is extruded essentially uh, medially. So anyway, there's a lot of excitement here. My young uh, researchers and my fellows have all agreed that this is the wave of the future. I think there's a lot of new techniques that will come through this technology. I think like with MRI, once we started to look at it, once we started to explore, once we started to codify what we were seeing, we then were able to learn more clinically, refine our skills clinically, refine our techniques surgically and look at the outcomes in a more predictable fashion. Anyway, there's a lot of excitement with this and uh, the machine is, is quite impressive. It's really well engineered and uh, I think you should check it out. Thank you so much for coming today.